Hello and welcome to the first of two videos on the pentose phosphate pathway and gluconeogenesis. And in this first video we're going to focus on the pentose phosphate pathway. We're going to look how the pentose phosphate pathway creates reducing power as a form of metabolic energy. And we're also going to look at the control of the pentose phosphate pathway, how uh, molecules that are created by this pathway regulate the enzymes that control it. In the previous lectures we've looked at catabolic processes such as glycolysis and the tri uh, citric acid cycle. But the body also has anabolic processes and what is the difference? So here we have two uh, descriptions can you guess which one is which? Which one is anabolic and which one is catabolic? Of course, the top one is catabolism and the bottom description is anabolism. So I always remember this by the use of uh, drugs that bodybuilders want to use and they use uh, anabolic steroids. And this is the building up of muscles they use drugs to use. So I always remember that and anabolism is where they, you're building something, you're, you're making it bigger. Whereas catabolism is destructive. So processes such as glycolysis and the citric acid cycle are known as catabolic pathway. And can you think of another example? Another example here is oxidative phosphorylation and these catabolic pathways involve the generation of ATP and also the molecules NADH and FADH2. Catabolic pathways include the pentose phosphate pathway which we're discussing in today's uh, lecture but also fatty acid synthesis. And in the second part of this, this uh, video series, we're going to look at gluconeogenesis, which is another example of anabolic pathway. And these biosynthetic pathways actually require energy. They do not generate energy like the catabolic pathways, and they involve a different electron carrier, and this is NADPH. So you'll notice this is the same as NADH, but it's, it's got a phos extra phosphate group. So why do we need the pentose phosphate pathway? What, what function does it perform? Well, in one important function is the, is the creation of what we call reducing power. And it does this by creating NADPH. It also creates sugars, which are different than the hexose, hexoses, the six carbon sugars. And it creates pentoses from the name pentose phosphate pathway. So these are five carbon sugars, which are required for nucleic acid synthesis. Can anyone name the nucleic acid sugars? Well, we have ribose and deoxyribose. Remember, deoxyribose is in DNA, whereas ribose is in RNA. Another important function of the pentose phosphate is the interconversion of seven, six, five, four, and three carbon sugars. So what is the overall reaction of the pentophosphate pathway? Well, we first we start with glucose 6-phosphate, which is then converted to ribose 5-phosphate. We require water and we generate protons and carbon dioxide as a waste product. And we convert NADP plus to two molecules of NADPH. Remember, the NADPH is the important reducing power, which is required for biosynthetic pathways. We're converting a six carbon sugar to a five carbon sugar. Remember the five carbon sugars are important for uh, nucleic acids. And this pathway, the pentose phosphate pathway, consists of two main branches. The first of these branches is the oxidative branch. And here again, we're going to show the overall reaction. 
we start off with glucose 6-phosphate, which is converted to ribulose 5-phosphate. Using two molecules of NADP+, we get two molecules of NADPH. So if we look at this in a little bit more detail, glucose 6-phosphate is converted by an enzyme called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase to 6-phosphonodelactone, which is then converted to 6-phosphogluconate, and finally we end with ribulose 5-phosphate. And it's during this process that the molecules of NADP are converted to NADPH, and here on the left hand side we can see where one molecule is converted from glucose 6-phosphate and then on the right hand side the 6-phosphogluconate then generates the, convert the uh, production of NADPH from ribulose 5-phosphate. So it's important to note just as in the electron transport chain where we're talking about NAD plus and NADH, remember don't get these two confused. The NAD plus acts as an electron acceptor, so it's accepting electrons to become NADPH. We also have the non-oxidative branch, and this starts with ribulose 5-phosphate, which is converted to ribose phosphate. This is then, remember, these are all five carbon sugars, as indicated in red. We have xylose 5-phosphate, and ribose and xylose can then be interconverted to a 7 carbon sugar and a 3 carbon sugar. Similarly, the 7 and the 3 can then be reorganized to create a 4 and a 6 carbon sugar. Here, erythrose 4 phosphate is the uh, 4 carbon sugar, and fructose 6 phosphate is the 6 carbon sugar. Similarly, the 5 carbon sugar and the 4 carbon sugar can be combined and rearranged to give the glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate 3 carbon uh, molecule and the fructose 6 phosphate the 6 carbon. Now a lot of the uh, molecules in here should be quite familiar to you. So we have the ribose, so the ribose 5 phosphate this is used for nucleic acid synthesis and then you should also recognize fructose 6 phosphate glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which are involved in glycolysis. So these molecules provide a way of linking the pentose phosphate pathway to other metabolic pathways such as glycolysis. So the pentose phosphate is similar to glycolysis. All the reactions will take place in the cytosol. And it's important to note that this particular pathway is very active in fat tissues much higher than compared to muscle tissues. And this is because fatty acid synthesis, as you'll learn later in the course, requires lot large amounts of NADPH. Remember, this is a biosynthetic pathway, an anabolic pathway, and it requires energy, and this energy is provided by the NADPH. And the key regulation point for the pentose phosphate pathway is glucose cis-phosphate dehydrogenase. This enzyme is regulated again by an allosteric interaction. So if we get lots and lots of NADPH, which is the main, one of the main purposes of the pentose phosphate pathway, this will inhibit the activity. Similar to uh, metabolic pathways that reg, uh, generate ATP, if you have sufficient ATP, the ATP levels will build up and this will switch it off. So the pentose phosphate pathway is switched off by high levels of NADPH. So how are the different uh, branches of the pentose phosphate pathway utilized? Well, if cellular demand for ribose 5-phosphate is high, what happens is we get the conversion of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate into xylose and erythrose phosphate. The xylose phosphate is then converted to ribose phosphate. So this is the main drug direction of the pathway here indicated by the red arrows and the major product is ribose 5-phosphate. And the times when this would be the driving force 
would be when cells are rapidly dividing. Remember, the cells need to replicate their DNA before di dividing, so therefore demand for ribose would be high, and therefore this part of the pathway would then be in the major driving uh, force. And it's interesting to note in this part of the pathway that no NADPH is produced. So all we're doing is focusing on producing ribose 5-phosphate, which is going to be required by those rapidly dividing cells. If cellular demand for ribose phosphate and NADPH is equal, then what happens is the glucose 6-phosphate is converted through the uh, oxidative branch to produce ribulose 5-phosphate. Here we get production of NADPH and the ribulose can then be converted to ribose. So we get production of both uh, components of the pentose phosphate pathway. And finally, if cellular demand for NADPH is high, what happens is the ribulose 5-phosphate will be converted to ribose, which is then converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This will then enter a pathway called gluconeogenesis, this, which we will cover in the next video, which will then lead to produce of NADPH. Ribose 5-phosphate uh, can also be converted to fructose phosphate. And so we, we get this cycle of NADPH production. If also ATP is required at this point, remember the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate uh, is an intermediate molecule for, the, for glycolysis. This molecule can enter glycolysis and produce pyruvate, which will then enter the citric acid cycle to produce ATP. So a summary for the pentose phosphate pathway is it is an important pathway for generating the reducing power or NADPH, which is required for fatty acid synthesis. Important to note that NADPH should not be confused with NADH, which is used by the oxidative phosphorylation pathway to produce ATP. It's important for the interconversion of sugars, three, four, five, six, seven carbon sugars. And the activity of this pathway is high in fat tissue, but not so much in muscle or in brain. That's not to say that it doesn't take place. It's just much, much higher in the fatty tissues. And it's an important pathway because it provides the sugar component for both DNA and RNA. And if you want to look up a little bit uh, more detail, the pentose phosphate pathway, then this is covered in chapter 18 of Stryer. I thank you for your attention.